Passing down the toilet. Jeremy Olson. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, I have two parts of my testimony. One, I'm here on behalf of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance to say that we support this bill. And most of the points that we would have made have already been made by some of the other people that testified, so I'm going to defer that testimony. One part that I would like to talk about is um, many points are brought up today of things that, of bad acts that would be made ostensibly legal if this bill were to pass. And um, in many cases, that's not actually true if minor modifications were made to this law. Um, the pub somebody brought up the idea that the public corruption statutes would become unenforceable if this bill were to pass. You could, um, you could fix that situation if you were to allow people who were individually aggrieved by, those corruption, by that corrupt act to bring a lawsuit. For example, if somebody living in a representative's district was aggrieved by that crime, then they could bring a lawsuit against the person because they would be the actual victim of it. Um, somebody brought up the act of sodomy, and in New Hampshire, sodomy is not illegal to begin with right now. There's no statute on the book in New Hampshire against sodomy. It's consensual. So that wouldn't even really apply to, to this bill. The um, situation with wildlife, if you were to create a property interest in wildlife, if people could claim ownership over the wildlife, then wildlife that were taken would be a crime against somebody's property. They could bring a lawsuit or they could bring a, a claim of theft against that. Um, attempts such as somebody attempting to carry out a hit or something like that, that's actually covered in the text of the bill, is that it does directly say that the attempted commission of a crime would still be covered by this law. So if you commit a murder, there's clearly a victim. If you attempt to commit a murder, there's a victim under the wording of this statute. Um, it also, in the statute, it mentions um, threats. It doesn't actually say direct threats. It just says direct, direct um, physical, emotional, psychological, or financial harm, or threatened physical, emotional, psychological, or financial harm. So the threats could be indirect. They could be through a police officer. They could be through a third party. If somebody were to threaten to kill me through a third party, I could have a claim of emotional harm against that, even though the act never took place. Um, somebody mentioned prostitution, how prostitution creates victims in that it spreads diseases. So does other consensual sexual activity that does not involve the transfer of money. Just people being promiscuous can spread disease, but that's not illegal currently. So that's not really a problem that would be inherent in legalizing prostitution through passing this bill. The idea of people being kept as sex slaves, prostitution, again, that's not so much a problem with prostitution as the fact that it's prostitution is illegal, so it creates that type of crime to begin with. If it were legal, that could be handled separately. Currently, it's legal for somebody to open a business to manufacture products, but if they were to try to open a sweatshop and force people to manufacture products, that's illegal currently, that would be the victim. It wouldn't be the actual prostitution, but the act of keeping somebody as a slave, that would be the, the victim creating crime. Um, trespassing is also a similar issue, is that's a crime against somebody's property that could be considered financial harm or emotional harm or physical harm, depending on what they do when they trespass. So that, again, there would be a victim if that activity were to be conducted. So. Um, <coughs> If this bill were to go to a subcommittee for amendment or anything, I'd be more than happy to work with the committee on that, and I'd be more than happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Do you believe that the section of prostitution that causes the prostitute to become a victim who is threatened <coughs> physically, emotionally, psychologically, and financially? If somebody's threatened or forced into prostitution, that is definitely a victimful crime and should be prosecuted as a crime. They've been harmed. The, the situation is there are people who consensually engage in prostitution. Not everybody is a sex slave. Not everybody is being forced by a pimp into engaging in prostitution. Two questions. Uh, number one, when we talked about this issue with a hitman, mm -hmm. If I were to hire you to do something, wouldn't you be a victim of my thoughts simply if you got caught? It didn't matter whether you carried it out, but you were part of that conspiracy, so you'd be a victim. Are you asking that I would have a cause against you under the no, law? you would be a victim, wouldn't you? 
I see, I see what you're saying. Yes, I, I believe that would be correct. Okay. When you talk about wildlife law, currently, in statute, all wildlife in the state of New Hampshire is put into public property, public trust, to be enforced by wildlife laws. So that's already in statute. So my analogy of one fish too many would be a theft of that private of that public property. I would agree with that, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any written testimony? Um, no, but I was going to write this up.